This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents Comet C-2012 S1 Ison and WTF Professional Science. Seriously, bro. Is thrifty. Part 50. It sure is nifty. And how shifty is in being thrifty. Comet Ison is alive. Comet Ison is dead. Comet Ison is alive. Comet Ison is undead. What is the deal, man? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's been about a week since my last update on Comet C-2012 S1 Ison. Things that got so weird, so I don't rush to conclusions until all the facts are in. <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I kind of painted myself into a corner with this video. See, my plan was to wait after Perihelion to kind of get a good idea of what is going on. And whereas some people put out an icing video a day, sometimes two a day since then, I like to be right. So I've been waiting on the sidelines. And well, this story that keeps getting weirder is still weird. By all intents and purposes, it does look like Ison has mainly dissipated, dissolved, broken up, and from the cameras, it looks like it is pretty high, and that I don't think its debris field will reach us, but who knows. And since this Ison story has been filled with surprises, I would not be surprised if we get at least one more surprise before the story is over. Now remember, this story does not officially end until January 12th to the 14th. As NASA informed us a long time ago, we will be going through Ison's original debris field when it passed the first time, right on our orbital plane. So hopefully we will get a good meteor shower from that. Uh, so it'll still give us a chance to find somebody we love or like a lot, lay in a field, some beer and an acoustic guitar and watch the meteor shower. But this whole thing has been bizarre. So who knows, man? Bruce Gary is going on to say that Comet Ison is the dud of the century. And then he's implied that it might be in a different place or it has become so spread out. You can't tell anymore. And I can't tell anymore. So I'm just kind of waiting. There are a shitload of stories out there. So I'm going to let the chips fall where they may. Uh, I'm going to put this video out and then I'll get right on to episode 51 because there's still a lot of stories to cover. Okay, great. Thanks. God bless everybody. Man, this has been one wild ride. The sun shot solar flares at Comet Ison. Bam, 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 like it was a video game. And the sun was trying to knock it down. I guess maybe eventually it did. We'll have to see though, because this story continues until January 12th to the 14th, when Earth crosses through Ison's debris field. Which brings us back to this. Stay cool, be calm. So, if the data we have been shown has been real at all, this has been one wild and crazy adventure. Ison, Linear, Anki, Lovejoy, Nevsky. We got a lot of giant dirty snowballs. I, mean, I don't know, man. Do you have time? Take 60 seconds to look at this comet. Celestial Angel Knight Ison that flew to the sun, flew around the sun, grew into the shape of a giant spaceship as it hit its higher gear like hell yeah we're flying now and then vanished asterisk 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 everything you ever wanted in an action adventure film has been here since the get-go and technically this story does not end until january 17th as far as i can recollect but a lot of the information i have is dependent upon information i've gotten from others amateurs and professionals so it's best to do your own research. All right. So after 50 episodes, I'm still sticking with the theory that comets are omens. That things are about to get weirder one way or another. You can have things get really weird, really good. You can have things get really weird, really bad. So this whole adventure has been good and bad. And on a personal level, whereas consumers... We are all supposed to delude ourselves at all times. This to me has felt like my own personal American James Bondian action adventure, unrequited romance. All right, so in film or in the basic human drama, you got three acts, beginning, the middle, the end. And act three began at Perihelion and it ends about January 17th. So I don't rush to conclusions. Until all the facts are in. Hee hee. But don't listen to me. I mean, the day leading up to the peak of the mountain, which is perihelion, and the day after, and really up to today, 
have just been fascinating to me, amazing, jaw-dropping, and I'm gobstopped. Plus, these really are dangerous times to disagree with any form of government, bank, or corporation. Ison's Perihelion Adventure was by far the most exciting astronomical event that has happened in at least 14 years. Outside of, you know, personal experiences of seeing it shooting star in person yourself because that moment always makes you feel like a little kid again can just wow awesome i saw she star and it's always super cool when it happens it's whoa i was i forgot about the heavens and all of a sudden it reminded me how magnificent they could be so uh if you think at any moment since this story has started, at the beginning of January, since they announced it as the comet of the century and turned every single camera they had on it, this story has only gotten more exciting year, adventurous year. Awesome. I mean, scary, creepy, weird, and totally seriously, bro. Like, seriously, bro. Am I my brother's keeper? Seriously, bro. Am I my brother's keeper? Seriously, bro. Am I my brother's keeper? Seriously, bro. Am I? My brother's keeper. Seriously, bro. Man. You know, like when cameras to the exact spot Ison wasn't. You know, like when Nifty declared dead, shot out the other side of the sun about a third of the size of the sun, looking like a giant spaceship. And then it just evaporated. Almost. Asterisk. There's still something there. I guess nobody should be that worried because now it only looks as big as... Mercury, like it's not as big as Earth anymore, so so that's good, right? Comet Ison compared to Earth, and I think the initial estimates were wrong. But I mean, what does it matter? Like when Ison got broke up into a bunch of shotgun pellets, they say that the shotgun pellets are gonna stay on the exact same path that Ison was gonna be on, which sounds damn near impossible. And if everything in the comet stayed with the comet at the exact speed the comet was traveling at the time that it was traveling, and there's no altercation. How does dust get left behind? I mean, wasn't that dust traveling with the comet at one time? At like 300,000 miles an hour? So in theory, shouldn't that dust stay with it the entire time? But we know that comets leave trails of debris and dust behind them, so... The theory of everything that makes up the comet, stays with the comet, cannot be true. But hey, man. Talking about professional science here, just has to sound good, and you have to get people to believe it. It doesn't necessarily have to make sense or be correct. Yes, dirty snowball that the sun paid no attention to. Somebody double their budget so we can get twice as much of the good stuff they've been giving us lately. How's that sound? Part 50. Well, I'm glad you're all still here. Happy post-Thanksgiving, happy pre-Christmas, pre-Hanukkah, pre-Kwanzaa, All Saints Day, and all holidays. Every day is a holy day, really. Every day is a holy day, in my opinion. And then out again, so I don't rush to conclusions until all the facts are in. Hee-hee. <laughs> but don't listen to me. I mean, stay cool, be calm. Ison, Linear, Anki. Lovejoy, Nevsky. We got a lot of giant dirty snowballs. I don't know, it's just best to study the stars, I think. Not study, but appreciate and have a relationship with them. They miss you. The moon misses you. The sun misses you. And Venus. Mars, Jupiter, they're always watching. The heavens, outer space, the universe. Whatever you want to call it. Technically and inherently, I think it's cooler than... Cooler is probably not the right word, but... It's probably best to dedicate, like, 100% of it. Stay cool, be calm. <laughs> it sure is shifty at how 